you like this is like the last video in that you start off trying to pigeonhole me into particularly sort of extreme positions that seem to be the opposite of what I was saying. I didn't say that legal prostitution would have high incidences of violence. It's that in general, you know, is our defense of sex workers going to be that we're not going to admit that prostitutes are high incidence victims of violence? Doesn't sound that, that helpful. Um, so that's why you have the cameras, right, and, and all of those security precautions, because there's a real danger. Is that just done to invade the sex workers because they don't have a right to privacy? Right? It's presented as it's to protect them from something real, right? So don't try to say, because I'm talking about that something real, that it's like, then it's some sort of extreme. You've done it. But then the rest of it, you know, you make a good point, and I agree. I think that this is, the, if the sexual hang-ups are an issue, I don't think the main ones are even on the prohibitionists, certainly not on the sex workers. The main issues are uh, society. That's what's generating the negative character of prostitution. But that then leads to the question of if we were to solve those hang-ups, the sexual hang-ups that are out there in society, which is the ones individuals have, but we're talking about the statistical play of them. If we were to solve that, what is, what, what, is left of the prostitution industry and the sex industry. What is what is left? Which which parts then go away? Which parts were driven by the sexual hangups of the clientele then, for example, wanting to be rough and violent and bossy. You know, they get rid of that need, then they don't need to hire a prostitute to do that. Then what is left? I think mainly what's what's left, that it's a that's a healthy, positive sexual thing, is sex surrogacy. You know, so, you know, the idea of prostitutes so that people that have trouble finding sexual partners can have sexual partners like the handicapped, like people that maybe are even are just socially awkward so you can self-select. I'm not saying you have to be handicapped, but but it's the idea of sexual surrogacy and it, it, it's, you can understand it best if you understand, okay, just people that need a sexual experience as opposed to say needing a, a weird one or like the power of using money for sex you know what's left and in stripping you know you might have exotic dancing well as I said I haven't, didn't go to strip clubs until recently and I went to one in Vegas and then one that was just out in the Midwest so I saw a little bit of a spread there and the one in Vegas was a fancy one in Vegas you know and um, Oh, I forget where I was going with that, but um, oh yeah, okay. So the it turns out, you know, this erotic dancing—it's not just an art form where they're dancing on stage. I mean, the main part of this business is they come out and it's lap dances and trying to get you to go in the back and spend more on dances that are involved and sold on the fact that there's more and more touching, more and more explicitness. So, um, it's, you know, stripping as it's done seems basically a kind of legalized form of prostitution. It's, it's about this one-on-one -on -one contact. And I'm not saying that, that, that that's wrong, but if you take away the sexual hang-up part, um, I'm not sure you don't just end up with erotic dancing. Of course there's reason to have erotic dancing, it's wonderful and belly dancing and nude dancing of all kinds of men and women great thing as an artistic thing and I love it and then you know is that what strip clubs would become if if the clientele had no sexual hang-ups that they're working through through the sex industry um, you know it's arguable that the sex industry is to help people deal with their sexual hang-ups so you can't really say that they shouldn't have any fine but you know we want to get rid of these ones these patriarchal uh, controller kind of versions and you know we can still have the, the man is the strong one and the force and the play and all of this uh, cat and mouse and uh, type stuff that might go a little bit in that direction but not in the degree of the sexual and economic exploitation um, that unfortunately the sex industry has been rife with. I agree that making it legal we can lessen that impact so that's why I'm just unequivocally for legalization but I want to be very careful about the kinds of uh, the kinds of regulations that we do as we legalize and, and that should take in, as I've been saying, that the whatever the facts are about the demographics, and not necessarily my intuition that you guys say, oh, well, that's wrong, but real ones and scientific studies, I agree, um, 
and um, you know, and so if I'm wrong that there wasn't a higher incidence of violence against prostitutes historically, then we wouldn't need the cameras, you know, in the legal brothels. Again, I think the best idea that I like from all of this is, what about brothels have to be owned by the prostitutes that work them? Yeah. How about a requirement like that? I feel that that would go a long way into ensuring that there isn't this unequal shit that's always been going on in the patriarchal version of the sex industry. All right.